Hello everyone, welcome to the 180 Q&A practice. We're going to start off today with the plaintiff attorney questioning. Okay, ready? On or about May 18, 2009, did you pick up a Marshall Stereo sound system from Mr. Lee Parker, a Michigan State police officer? Did I pick it up? Did you pick it up? No. Did you deliver it to him? Did I deliver it to him? Yes, I did. And where did you get that Marshall Stereo sound system? At the swap meet. Which swap meet are you referring to? The Lansing State Fairground swap meet. Do you have a receipt for this purchase? No, I don't. Did you pay cash or did you pay by card? Cash, I used all 20s. Who was with you when you purchased it, if anyone? No one was with me. Do you have any evidence that you purchased the stereo at the Lansing State Fairground swap meet? I don't think so, no. The guy was just there, you know. He was there and had some stereos and I bought them. Did you know him? No. Did you buy any other stereos from him? I think I bought two or three stereos from the guy. What did you do with the other two or three stereos? I sold them. To whom? Just people. Can we have their names and addresses, please? I don't have their names and addresses. I am sorry. Over what period of time did you sell them? I don't know. It took me two months, maybe, to sell them. How much did you pay for the stereos at the swap meet? Around $100 for each of them. So you paid $300 or $400 in cash for them? That's right. Where did you get the $300 or $400 cash that you used? I made it gambling at the casino. I was in the business, the game of chance. Sometimes I made money, sometimes I didn't. Okay, did you deposit the money you made gambling in the checking account? Sometimes I did, yes. So did you then withdraw cash from your checking account for $400 immediately prior to the swap meet for the purchase of these sound systems? I don't think I did. I think I already had that money in my savings account. So you took it out of your savings account? I think so, yes. Where is your savings account located? The First City Bank, downtown Detroit. So that savings account will show a withdrawal of $400? I am pretty sure. Is that where you got the money that you took to the swap meet to purchase the stereos? That's correct. How many stereos did you buy at the swap meet? I told you three or four. How many? Three or four? Three or four. Did you withdraw $300 or $400? It could have been $300 or $400, either three or four. I am not exactly sure, so it would be either three or four. How much money did you withdraw out of your savings account before you went to the swap meet? I don't know. I really don't know. Did you do it for the purpose of buying stereos at the swap meet? I think I took some out for spending because I needed some money and for some of the stereos. Did you frequently visit swap meets held throughout the state of Michigan? Yes, I did. How often had you visited the Lansing State Fairground swap meet? I don't remember, several times. How often had you purchased stereos from the particular individual, Eddie Trent? I don't remember, two or three times. When you purchased these stereos, didn't you wonder how he could afford to sell these items at below wholesale prices? No, I just knew it was a good deal. I knew I could make some money. Did you ever think that this merchandise that you were purchasing might be stolen property? No, no, I just thought it was a good deal. You said you visited the swap meet several times. How many times? Oh, about three or four times. In all the time you visited the Lansing State Fairground swap meet, how many stereos did you purchase from Mr. Trent? Oh, between eight and ten, not more than a dozen. Give me an exact number. About ten. Okay, I'm going to switch transcripts. Here we go, ready? There were two cameras there. Right. One was a camera belonging to the special effects people. That's right. Which was under the direction of Mr. Roberts. 
He was operating the camera. He was the director of photography from the camera. Mr. Roberts was the operating cameraman of that camera for the special effects department. That's right. Now, was your camera being used in any way? No. Where was your cameraman and your camera located at the time that these trips were being made? Wait a minute. You said, where was my cameraman? You had a cameraman, operative cam <clears throat> cameraman? Yes, but he wasn't operating. I appreciate that, but where was he? I don't recall where he was. Where were you? I was sitting in the back of the camera on the right-hand side. Where was Mr. Sanders? I don't remember. He was in the vicinity. How far from him were you? I was on the other side. I was just a little bit off center of the camera. I wasn't directly in back of the camera. I was to the right so that I could see what was going on. Okay, I'm going to switch transcripts. <clears throat> I've got allergies today. <laughs> All right, it's going to be back to plaintiff. Also, I believe that we can locate, I'm sure, my client is confident that the respondent has the canceled check showing that the parties paid $20,000 to Mrs. Sophie Netter as an interest payment, interest only payment when they refinanced or sold the original house that they bought using that money and purchased the house that they have now out in Moreno Valley. When was that done? That was done in 2008 or 09, I believe. My client denies that there was any such payment. <clears throat> My client left the home in October of 2015 and she left with less than a thousand dollars worth of property <clears throat> there still remains in the home approximately one hundred seventeen to one hundred eighteen thousand dollars. Your Honor, we're getting off again here, and now I of goods and equipment. She didn't get any papers. She didn't get checking account material. She doesn't know where the loan balances were. She has nothing, so she is at a loss where this claim that she has some kind of a check is coming from. We can trace back through. My client says that. There were several accounts that they had in transition from moving from Garden Grove, I believe, to here. So we're going to have to check through. How much time do you think you'll need, if we can find, so far as the original check is concerned? If mom's available, you can call her, and if she hasn't destroyed it, she ought to be able to find it within a week, right? Well, that's the problem, Your Honor, is Mr. Netter's mother is ill. You've had your sisters looking for the check, haven't you? Yes, and they've been more concerned with mom's health right now than finding this canceled check, so that is the problem. I don't know whether or not we would be able to find out or find it around the house. If not, we have two avenues open to us. One is to find, to go to the bank where it was drawn, and hopefully get those records. Was it drawn from a savings account? I don't remember at this time, Your Honor. So we would have to communicate with his mother. Now, is she physically ill or does she have some mental problems too that might affect her ability or reason? She had heart surgery. She's partially paralyzed. She has some paralysis. She can't speak correctly either. When she had all the medications, it damaged some of her vocal. She hasn't been back to her own house. I guess now it's been almost three months. She's been living at my sister's house, and they've been alternating care from that point. She's been in and out of hospitals for the last month. Well, it may be that the continuance is not going to improve her condition at all. Well, I don't know that it would. If not, one thing maybe she could help us find it. If not, we can find out the bank that it was drawn on, get a copy of it from the bank. There, if that doesn't work, then we can take depositions, perhaps, not from his mom because she's not going to be able to respond too much in a deposition, I would think. It's supposed to improve the voice. The vocal cords are supposed to improve, but it's been now three months and she's still at a whisper. But his sister, both sisters were present when this transaction was discussed. Well, she went to both four when my father died, all this took place afterwards, so she just talked to them regarding circumstances and what should be done. As far as the money and whether she should let him renew the loan or what, so if we had to, 
When was the case filed? We made a filing April 25th. This is the first date set. Okay, I'm going to read just a few, maybe a, about a minute longer. Switch transcripts one more time. Here we go, plaintiff attorney. So once again, like we talked about the other day, we are dealing with recall versus awareness of what is going on. That's right. You are stuck as a psychiatrist when you are getting your information from the defendant, using that as the source of material, just discussing that source and getting the information from the defendant. You are stuck with evaluating the defendants, the person's recall of the events. Is that correct? I don't believe it's correct from the way I understand your question is worded, not just evaluating his recall. I say that his ability or inability to recall, I think may not be the crucial issue. I have to evaluate it from the information he is able to tell me, plus other information that is available. In this case, there was a great deal of written information available, and I don't recall whether there was a psychiatric report or not. Usually I make reference to it if there is, but I don't recall reading one. For instance, just take this very simple fact, he is not inclined to be violent. Now judging from your evaluation and the information that you received from the defendant, you wrote, <clears throat> he is not inclined to be violent, however. Now you first said generally he is not moody, but he is inclined to be moody when drinking. He is not inclined to be violent, however. You wrote this in your report and I assume you felt that was a significant bit of information worthy of being put in your report in a case involving violence and aggressive behavior. That's right, and that information came solely from the defendant. Okay, that concludes our Q&A practice for the 180 class. Have a great day.